Hello, everybody. Um, hi, good afternoon, and welcome to UBC Campus's Play and Learn at Home. Um, my name is Alyssa, and today I'm going to be showing you a couple of different skills um, to make your own comics. Um, uh, just a couple of things before we get started, I wanted to remind you of. Um, one of them is for our live stream today. All participant video and audio should be turned off, so the only person you should be able to see or hear is me. Um, and if you or your caregivers have a question, you can use the chat function to um, type it in there and one of the moderators will answer you as soon as they can. Um, and in that chat, please make sure that you use respectful and camp appropriate language at all times. Um, so we're gonna get started. Uh, today I'm going to teach you a couple of different, um, yes, skills in drawing and in writing and then we're going to combine those sort of um, so that I can show you how to make your own comics. Um, comics are something that I really like to um, write mostly because I think that there's so many different kinds and there's so many different ways to communicate information. Um, but one of the things that can be hardest to do is get started. Um, and we're gonna get some of those jitters out right now. Um, as soon as I forgot about, we wanted to um, make sure that everyone has the right materials. So you should have um, a pencil, an eraser, um, a couple of pieces of blank paper. We'll be using three um, today. So three pieces of blank paper um, and then a pair of scissors. That's everything that you need. Um, if you want to have a fine liner or pencil crowns, you can also use those too. Um, so to get started, we're going to use one piece of blank paper, like this, and we're going to fold it and divide it into four sections. So I'll show you how to do that here. Um, so we're just going to start with folding it this way. And don't be too worried about the edges lining up um, because we're just looking to divide the piece of paper. So something like that, and then unfold it, and then fold it in half again this way. Just like this. So what you should end up with is something that looks like this, and it's a piece of paper that's divided into four sections. Um, we're going to use this piece of paper, as I said, to get some of our drawing jitters out. Um, and I wanted to do a little example of that just to show you that, um, so I, I do comics all the time, um, and sometimes I spend a long time on them, and sometimes I spend a short time on them. And one of my favorite characters looks like this. It's a slug. It's not an artistic masterpiece, but she does have a lot of personality, which is something that we're going to exercise right now. So with your piece of paper, what we're going to do is you're going to think of an animal that you would like to draw. So it can be your favorite animal or just an animal that you think would be fun to draw. Um, some animals that I really like to draw are um, elephants or giraffes or um, octopus. Um, so you can pick whatever animal you like and we're going to draw that animal in this part of the paper right here. So in the top quarter. Um, and you can use whatever materials you like for this. I'm going to tilt my screen down so you can see what I'm doing too, but you don't have to copy me. You can do a completely different animal if you like. Um, we're going to take two minutes to do this. So I'm gonna set a timer and I'll tilt my screen down. So yeah, I'll just be using this part of the paper right here. And so you can draw, yes, whatever animal you like in the next two minutes. So I'm going to start right now. So I think I'm gonna draw an elephant. Trunk. And some ears. I have a lot of practice at drawing because I do it every day, but some people might be a little bit slower and that's totally okay. I'm 
give my elephant some toes. And a tail. And we'll make it smiling, so. She's having a good day. Let's do some tusks too. I'm going to make. So like I said, if you have pencil crowns and you want to color it, go ahead. If you have a moment to, if you're still drawing, that's also completely fine. Just practicing right now. We should have, there's 15 more seconds. And like I said, if you don't finish, that is totally okay. Just practicing right now. All right. So I have a pink elephant going on in my first section. Um, and what we're going to do in the next section, so this one right here, is the exact same thing. Um, we're going to draw the same animal. So if you drew an elephant, draw another elephant. If you drew a giraffe, draw another giraffe. Um, whichever one you drew the first time, we're gonna do that again. But this time we're only gonna draw it in one minute. So you're probably going to have a little bit less detail. It might not be colored. And that's totally okay. We're gonna start right now. So I'm going to do the same thing, start with the head. And do some ears. Notice that time's gonna go by a little bit faster this time, so we have less of it. We have about 15 seconds left now. I'm gonna try to color this. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. So, elephant number two. Mine looks like this. Um, yours might not look as silly as mine. Maybe it'll be a better drawing. I don't know, but this is what mine looks like. Um, so you can tell that the difference between elephant number one and elephant number two, elephant number two doesn't look as happy. She looks a little bit confused. Maybe she's, maybe she's had, maybe she's had a stressful day. Maybe just things haven't been going her way. Maybe she slept in, maybe she's late for school. We don't know. Um, what do we think we're going to do on this one right here? We're going to draw another animal. Um, so same thing. I will draw another elephant. If you drew a dog, you're gonna draw another dog. Um, and this time we're only going to have 30 seconds to draw it. So we're going to do 30 seconds. And we'll start right now. Get the trunk in there. We have about 15 seconds left. Four, three, two, one. All right. Sweating. Stressful. Elephant number three. Here's what she looks like. A little bit smaller. They're shrinking as I'm getting as I'm getting a little bit more um, quick with drawing. Um, and you probably guessed it. This next one, we're going to do the same thing. Draw another elephant, but we're only going to do it in ten seconds. Um, I'm not going to use a timer for this one. I'm just going to count down on my own. Nobody start yet. Don't start. 
don't start yet. I'll, I'll say when we can start. All right, so we're gonna do right here. Ready, set, go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stop! <laughs> All right. So now I've drawn four elephants. This one took two minutes. This one took one minute. This one took 30 seconds, and this one took 10 seconds. And I'm sure that all of your drawings probably look different than mine, but they'll all probably have some things in common too. So something that we can tell from these pictures is what parts of the animal we think are the most important. So for me, I drew an elephant and the trunk was really important. You notice that some of my elephants, these ones have eyebrows and this one doesn't. Um, this one has a really kind of fluffy tail. This one just has a bit of a squiggly line, but my elephant always has a trunk. It always has big ears and kind of a round body. Some of them have four legs and some of them have three and that's totally okay. Um, so the purpose of this exercise is again for us to kind of establish what parts of the drawing are the most important, but also to think about how the sometimes the the less time we spend on things and if we just are having fun and um, getting something on the page, we can come up with things that are really fun. I think, for example, that I like this elephant more than I like this elephant. I just think that the style is a little bit more fun. Um, so that's something that we want to keep in mind when we're making comics is that sometimes you can get really stuck looking at a blank page and not knowing what to put on it. Um, but if you give yourself a time limit and just go, 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 sometimes you can create things that are really fun. Um, so we'll set that aside for right now. And you're going to take out another piece of paper, just a blank one like this again. Um, and next we're going to do a writing exercise. So for this, you'll need um, a pencil or a pen, even a pencil crown, it doesn't really matter. Um, and this writing exercise can be done in full sentences, it can be done in point form, just whatever way you want to communicate your ideas onto the page. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to try to write down everything we've done so far today. So it would be like the story of your life starting from the moment you woke up this morning. So you and um, another thing is we want to try to include as many details as possible. So I might write something like, I woke up, I got out of bed, I walked into the kitchen, I reached for the fridge, I opened the fridge, I got out the milk, I opened the milk, I got a bowl, I got a spoon, I got the cereal. Um, so we're almost, it's almost like we're telling a story as if we're stalling and we don't want to get to the point quite yet. Um, so yeah, like I said, we'll start with the morning. So I'll, I'll tilt my screen down so you can see what I'm writing, but you can write the, your own story of whatever you did this morning. And we'll have about five-ish minutes to do that. Um, so while I'm doing this, again, you can write your own story of what you did this morning. Um, and there's no pressure to make it longer or shorter than mine. Um, what we're going to be using this for is establishing different parts of the story that are important to tell. Um, so if you can, you can listen to me and if you want to um, do similar things to what I'm doing, that's fine. But also feel free to um, just write whatever story you want to write, depending on what you did this morning. Um, so I'm going to start and write, I woke up. And then um, I got out of bed. And then I put on my left slipper. And then I put on my right slipper. Something that we can keep in mind when we're doing this is not just things that we did, but things that we felt. So maybe I'm going to write, I felt tired because I did. Ooh, 
we can also think of things that we felt in terms of smelling or hearing or tasting things. So when I woke up this morning, it was raining. So I can write, I heard the rain. And then I walked into the kitchen. I don't know what you guys do first thing in the morning, but I always eat. And then I open the fridge. And then let's say the fridge was cold. So again, you want to be writing about actions you took, but also things that you were feeling, things that you were smelling, things that you were tasting. Say, open the fridge, the fridge was cold. Caught, wrote the milk. I poured all cereal. I got a spoon. I ate the cereal. Now I'm going to write about how the cereal tasted. Um, the cereal was crunchy and the cereal was cold. So I'm in maybe the first two minutes of my day, but I've already written a whole page because when you really think about it, there's lots of little details and things that we do that can be included in a story. I'm going to give you about a minute longer to finish yours. I'll keep writing mine here. So the cereal was crunchy, the cereal was cold. Um, and then what did, what did I do while I was eating breakfast? Maybe I read a comic. The comic was funny. I washed my dishes. Great. All right. So however much you have right now is perfect. It doesn't matter how far into your day you got. I only got up until I ate a bowl of cereal and washed my dish. Um, so what you should have is something that looks kind of like this. It's a piece of paper that has a bunch of things that you did and felt this morning. So if we were making a comic about this, we wouldn't put all of this in there. But using this exercise, we've written some things down that we might not have written down if it was, uh, for example, a novel. So for mine, I put, I, put on my, I put on my left slipper and I put on my right slipper. If I was writing a story, I probably wouldn't say, I woke up, I put on my right slipper, I put on my left slipper. But in drawings, putting on my right slipper and putting on my left slipper might be something that I want to draw. Maybe I put my right slipper on the wrong foot by accident and then I was frustrated and then I had to switch the slippers to the other feet. Um, so writing out little details like this can help us discover kind of like these little magic moments that work really well in comics. Um, I also have things like I heard the rain so I heard the rain in a comic. It could, I could express that by um, having a speech bubble that says, I hear rain, which is fine, but it's a little bit boring. We also could, maybe I could draw a window behind me and I could see the rain. Or maybe I don't have a window behind me, but there's little sounds all around me that say pat, 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 
pot. And when I wake up, I'm looking around like what's making that sound. And then we see the window. Um, so there's a bunch of different fun ways to express things like that too. Um, another example is I opened the fridge and the fridge was cold. So um, ways that we can show the fridge is cold. Again, so the person could say the fridge is cold. Um, maybe the person opens the fridge and we can see them shivering and they have these little lines around them. Um, maybe we open the fridge and we can see from inside the fridge that all the food is frozen. Um, maybe the fridge is broken, it made everything too cold and the milk is frozen. We have to find something else for breakfast. Um, so what we're going to do next with this is pick out parts of it that you think would make good details in a comic and parts of it that you think would make not so good details. So the good details, like for me, I like the right slipper and left slipper. I'm going to circle those things like this. And then ones that are not good details. So for example, I have, I walked into the kitchen. I think that's kind of boring. So I'm going to cross it out like that. So what we'll do is we'll go through, circle and cross out anything um, that we think would be good in a comic or thing would be bad in the comic. Um, and you don't have to do this all right now, but this is just a good exercise to use and it doesn't have to be for something you did. So if you're going to write a comic about um, a dragon who is learning how to play soccer or something like that, you can do something like this to write out everything you think your story should have in it and then circle and cross out things that you think would be important and things that you think would be not so important. Now we're going to get to the comic making part. Um, so you can put this aside and get out one more piece of blank paper like this. Um, we're going to be making a zine, which is a little mini comic um, that looks like this. This is, this is my comic, Alyssa's comic, um, and it has six pages in it. And what's super neat is that it has no staples and it's all one piece of paper. Um, so I'll be showing you how to make one of those right now. I'll just tilt my screen down so you can see. There we go. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by folding it in half. Long ways, hot dog style, just like that. and then we'll open it back up and we're going to fold it in half again. So this is similar to what we did at the beginning. This workshop will fold it in half again. Just like this. So then you should have a piece of paper that looks real similar to the one that you drew all your elephants or giraffes or octopi or whatever you were drawing before. So it looks like this. Then you're going to take one side of the paper and fold it into the middle. So just into this crease that you made before. like that. And then we're going to do the same thing with the other side. So taking this side, and folding it all the way into the middle like this. So what you should end up kind of having is something that sort of looks like a closet or a door. And then we'll open it all the way back up. Like that. And then this crease that we made right in the middle here, we're going to fold it in half there. So what we end up having is this piece of paper that it's folded in half, just like this. This is the open part. The closed part should be facing towards you, so towards your own body. That's the closed part. 
this, this is what you need the pair of scissors for. So if you have one around, now's the time to get them out. And I'm just going to show you where to cut. We're just gonna make a small cut. I'll show you with a pencil that's right in the middle along this line you fold it and only right until the center of the piece of paper. So just where this X is. So I'm going to be cutting just to right here along this line. You can see the line that I'm going to cut to. And again, this is, I'm cutting on the part of, piece of, part of the paper that is closed. I'm going to pick this up and cut in the middle just to the center, just like that. So what you'll end up having is something that kind of looks like this. And we're gonna open this up. This is kind of funny looking piece of paper that has a hole in the middle. And you're going to fold it in half this way. So hot dog style. And then this next part is the fun part. So you can kind of see it looks like this. There's a hole right in the middle. What we're going to do is you can kind of see, I'm looking through it right now. I'm going to hold this together and kind of press the paper together like this. And that's gonna make two more pages. This is the part of the video you might want to rewatch on YouTube. <laughs> and then we're folding it like that. So what I have now is a little book that has six pages in it. And you can use this, so I've, I've drawn a little bit in this one, so I just did the pages, one, two, three, four, five, six the end. Um, and what you can do is you can use the exercises that we've done today. Um, so you can combine the drawing exercises, the writing exercise um, to fill in this little zine of your very own, um, which is super fun because they're really little. They're really easy to make. You can make a lot of them. Um, and so they're really easy to practice on and they're like cute little books that you have. Um, so that's it. That's all, um, that's the end of um, this little workshop. Um, so what we've done today is we've learned how to draw quickly and kind of get our ideas out and get those jitters out. We did an exercise where we wrote down a story and then picked which parts would be good for a comic and which parts would be not so good. Um, and then we also learned how to fold a little zine where we can put all of our, idea, I, we can put all of our ideas into. Um, so thanks so much for um, joining me today. Um, I just wanted to let you know that the, um, the next um, session that we have um, is Watercolors with Kiana, um, which will be on Monday, May 4th from 11 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. and that's for ages six to eight. Um, yeah, so um, also this session has been recorded, um, like I just said earlier, um, and it will be posted on the UBC Camps YouTube channel. So if you want to, um, if you want to go to the YouTube channel um, and rewatch anything, feel free to do that. Um, you can also share your experience online. You can tag at UBC Camps on Instagram or follow UBC Camps on Facebook and use the hashtag hashtag UBC Play and Learn. Um, yeah, that's all. I hope you all have a good rest of your day and keep drawing.